Okay, this is uh, some homework help here for WebAssign 14b on titrations. And uh, there's only six problems on this, and we'll, we'll go through a couple of them pretty thoroughly, and then the other ones are similar enough to them that I think you should be fine uh, with just a couple of examples. And don't forget, you've got uh, your textbook that uh, can be useful as well. And here on page uh, 498 in your textbook, you've got a good example down here um, for an acid-base titration uh, down here below that's, that's nicely explained. So uh, you've got that to refer to as well, which uh, I hope you're using. You know, All right, so let's get started. I've got, uh, I printed out a copy of this. And uh, we're going to look at questions one, two, and three kind of combined, it's really, if you, if you look at the whole thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's really questions one, two, three, and four that all ask for molarity. Now, number two also has a percent by mass, and we'll, we'll take a, a couple of minutes and look specially, especially at the, that particular part in just a little bit. But numbers one, two, three, and four all ask for a molarity, which is pretty much the standard practice for a titration type of calculation. That's often why we do titrations. And then numbers four and six are a little bit different. They give you both molarities and they're asking you instead for a volume. How much of one of the two reactants will it take to react with the other one? So we'll look at uh, an example of the one, two, three, five type of problem. And then an example of the four and six and take a little bit of time on that percent calculation right there. All right, so let's start with number one right here. With all six of these problems, a balanced equation is always a great starting point. So let's start with the balanced equation here. Put this paper over so we've got lines. And we can see uh, calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid here are the, the two reactant substances. 31 milliliters of the calcium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid there. Let's, in fact, let's just start with the equation. So we've got calcium hydroxide, calcium You'll recall as a plus two ion based on its position in the table, and hydroxide is the OH and has a minus one ion. So the correct neutral formula for calcium hydroxide is CaOH2. And of course, hydroxide, we want to communicate two hydroxides, not just two H's, so we have to remember to put that in parentheses. Let's get those charges out of there once we write the neutral formula. And that's reacting with hydrochloric acid. We're pretty familiar with hydrochloric acid, so we'll just write that as HCl there. And then they react in a double replacement fashion. So the calcium is going to pair with the chloride here. And then the OH is going to pair with the H. The H and the OH, of course, is, is water. We can think of it as HOH, you know, even kind of maybe write it down as HOH, but it's, it's properly represented as H2O, particularly in WebAssign when I ask for an equation. In this case, we don't need to type in an equation. And then the calcium and the chloride are going to pair up. And again, calcium maintaining a plus two ion charge Chloride minus one, CaCl2 is what we expect. All right. So notice that we get um, notice that we get two chlorides over here, even though we didn't have to, and that's okay because now we fix it by balancing the equation. We put a two here for the two chlorides. That gives us two H, which pair up with the two OHs right here, and together that that's going to give us two water molecules. And there's one calcium, one calcium. So that's now a balanced equation. We're ready to move forward. We can take stock of our uh, information here. We have 31 milliliters of the lime water, which is our calcium hydroxide. So 31 milliliters, 31.00 is a point there, milliliters of the CaOH2. And then we have 13.1 milliliters of the HCl, 13.10 milliliters of the HCl. And we know its concentration is 0.162 molar HCl. Now remember, molarities, when we see a capital M right there, that actually it looks like a single unit, but we want to remember to think about that as 0.162 moles of HCl for every one liter of solution, HCl solution. That's, that's very useful. We use that a lot. All right, so we've got this information here. When you're doing titration problems, your best bet is to start with the substance, the reactant, typically is how you're going to be starting these, that you know the most about. In this case, it's the HCl. 
So we'll go ahead and convert our milliliters to liters here by just moving the decimal three places to the left. We're far enough along and, and understand the milliliter to liter conversion factor relationship easy enough to just make that a pretty simple little transition. So that's going to be 0 0.01310 liters of HCl solution. We're then going to use its molarity. Remember, molarity is moles per liter. We're going to drop that right down in here, use that to cancel out the liters of solution. So one liter of HCl solution and the 0.162 moles of HCl is equivalent to that. So the liters of HCl solution cancel out. We then use the balanced equation. And if you're a little maybe um, unsure about you know where we're headed with this, where did I put that mole map? Um, we can refer to the mole map. There it is. Uh, it's kind of my chewed up and marked up copy of it, but we're, we just have done this. We converted milliliters to liters by just moving the decimal. We've converted liters to moles using molarity. Okay, so we're starting here and we're moving our way along right here. We're now going to convert from moles of the HCl, moles of HCl, to the moles of calcium hydroxide. And then we need to get to molarity, which is right here. So we're going to stop there, but we need to get at it from both sides. We're going to combine the moles and the liters. So this mole map, remember, is available uh, in our past Moodle pages there. Scroll down and you can find it. I think it's chapter 6 or 7, I think, is where you'll find the mole map somewhere down there. So we're going to use our balanced equation now to change your conversation from HCl to CaOH2. Two to one ratio here. For every two moles of HCl, I'm going to be able to neutralize and react one mole of calcium hydroxide. And at this point, I, I'm just going to go ahead and, and stop. Now, sometimes you'll want to continue that reaction uh, to continue that series of conversion factors. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and stop and run some numbers. So we have um, 0 0.0131. One, yeah, I was making sure I was getting the right number there. Times 0 0.162 divided by 2. And that is 0 0.00106. We've got three sig figs, so I'm going to leave this number in my calculator here. If you guys can see that. I'm going to leave that number in my calculator, but I'll jot it down with the proper number of sig figs here on the paper. So that's CaOH2. All right, now we're not done. That's just the moles. They're asking us for the molarity. and Right here, they're asking us for the molarity. And the molarity is equal to the moles divided by the liters. And so we take that 0 0.00106 moles of calcium hydroxide, and we divide that by the liters of calcium hydroxide, which is right here, right? 31 milliliters. So let's convert that to liters, and that is 0 0.03100 liters. And notice that with proper labeling, I have calcium hydroxide being compared to calcium hydroxide. If you ever find that those aren't matching up, you double check what you've been doing there because you might have messed something up. So that number's already in my calculator. So I'm going to just go ahead and divide that answer by uh, the 0 0.031. And that gives me 0.0342 molar calcium hydroxide. There we go. So that's our answer. You'll drop that into drop that into web sign and get that green check mark. There we go. Green check mark. And you're ready to move on. The again, question one, uh, two, three, and five. Questions one, two, three, and five all have that similar kind of a setup right there. Um, in terms of figuring out the moles. And then dividing by the liters of solution. Now, number two, we've got a special kind of follow-up to that. Uh, let me kind of fold this back here so we can see you to work on this page here. So, uh, number two, we're, uh, you're going to do a similar thing. We, we wrote the equation before just to kind of, you know, in class, just to re, uh, reinforce that there. We have acetic acid, which is an ic acid. So we look for the acetate ion, acetate C2H3O2, and it has a minus one charge. Since it's an acid, it starts with H plus, and so there's our acetic acid formula. That's reacting with NaOH. 
And you do the double replacement and you get everything. Everything turns out to be one to one. There. You're going to do a very similar problem to figure out the molarity for letter A. You're going to do something very similar to what we just did right here. You know, you convert the liters to moles. In this case, it'll be of the um, NaOH. That's what you know the most information about. And then you go from moles of NaOH to moles of acetic acid. And then you divide by the liters. Now, it's important that you kind of jot down the moles of your substance at that point in your work. It's always great to show your work because you can use it as a guide for solving other problems. What's different here in letter B? So letter A is done really pretty much the same way. But what's different here in letter B is that we need to find the percent by mass. And the percent by mass is this percent mass of acetic acid, HC2H3O2, in vinegar. That's acetic acid. It's a pure substance. Vinegar is a mixture. It's mostly water. And so they're asking how much percentage-wise of the mostly water vinegar solution, how much is, in fact, acetic acid. And so we need, because it's by mass, we need the grams of vinegar, HC2H3O2, and then we need the grams of the vinegar, the part over the whole, the solute over the solution. And, of course, times 100 when we set that up. The grams of vinegar is probably the easier one. So, so we can kind of start there. The grams of vinegar, if you look, they have 5 milliliters of vinegar. So we can take that 5 milliliters of vinegar. And since they give us the density at 1.007, 1.007 grams of vinegar for every 1 milliliter of vinegar. And milliliters of vinegar are gone, and you have your grams of vinegar that you can put into the bottom. The top part, the grams of acetic acid, is going to rely on what you did for letter A. And I didn't show that. You know, I want you to, I want you to do that for yourself. But part of what you had to solve for in letter A was the moles. You know, you, you set up some work. You did a couple of conversion factors. And you solved for the moles of acetic acid, HC2H3O2. That's just a simple little conversion away from the grams of acetic acid. So what you can do is take those moles of acetic acid, whatever they turned out to be. So whatever the moles is, and we're going to convert that using the molar mass of acetic acid. So you go to the periodic table, and for every one mole of HC2H3O2, you're going to add up a total of four carbons, I mean four hydrogens, two carbons, and two oxygens. Add all those up, and that'll be the grams of acetic acid per mole. Now, you don't have a whole mole, so you got to multiply this out. And that will give you the moles of, or the grams of acetic acid, because the moles cancel out. That'll give it the grams. That goes up top. The vinegar grams goes on the bottom. And there you go. So we looked at that in class. It's just something for you to look at again in case something didn't click or you didn't catch all of it. Or you weren't there. Okay. So let's go through one more type of problem. Uh, again, one 2A, 3, and 5 all have a very similar format to what we just did here. And that's also reinforced in the book on page 496. 498. The other problem, uh, the other one we want to take a look at is uh, number 4 and 6. Those two are very similar. So we'll set this one up. Uh, and then I'll let you kind of figure out 5 and 6. I do want to draw your attention to the fact that here in number 5, H3PO4, NaOH, and in number 6, NaOH, H3PO4, when you write the chemical equation for one of them, whichever one you choose to do first, the, it's, it can be used for both of them, 5 and 6. Let's take a look at number 4. We have a chemical reaction, new chemical reaction that we need to write up here. So we have... Yeah, we'll go this way. So we have sodium hydroxide. That's a pretty familiar compound. So NaOH, sodium is plus one, hydroxide is minus one. Sulfuric acid, it's an ic acid, which means that we are considering the sulfate ion. And if you don't have it memorized, you look it up in the ion list. It's SO4 and it has a two minus charge, which means that as an acid with H's out in front, considered to be plus ones, that should be H2, SO4. And then by double replacement, we get a reaction of sodium paired with sulfate. So that's Na plus one ion, sulfate, 
minus two ions, that's Na2SO4, and then the H and the OH, that gives you H2O. Again, notice there's H2 here, but there's only one OH here. Pair it up the way that the charges should predict you would pair them up, not based on how many what you see over here. We can fix the numbers when we balance the equation. So we pair it up as HOH, H plus, OH minus, and we write it as H2O. And then we balance the equation by noticing that there's two sodiums, that's two sodiums. That also gives me two OHs. And with the two H's from here, then I've got my two waters. And then there's one sulfate and one sulfate. So there's our balanced equation. Let's, uh, let's kind of figure out, take stock in terms of our numbers here. We have a concentration of sodium hydroxide, that is 0.248 molar NaOH. We have a concentration and volume of sulfuric acid, so this is 0 0.220 molar H2SO4, and its volume is 30.52 milliliters of H2SO4. Remember the molars, the molarities here. Those are really split units, so this is the equivalent of point thought bubble here, 0 0.220 moles of H2SO4 for every one liter of H2SO4 solution. And thought bubble over here, this is the equivalent of 0.248 moles of NaOH for every one liter of NaOH. All right, so that's that's what we have in terms of given information. Uh, they are asking for the number of milliliters of sodium hydroxide, so that's we're trying to find how much sodium hydroxide is it going to take. Starting again with the substance, the compound that you know the most about, we know the most about the H2SO4. This is a lovely conversion factor, so let's start with that. It started with that as a conversion factor. Sometimes that you know, sometimes you run into dead ends. We don't like dead ends. Uh, that's why we use maps, like mole maps. Right? So we're going to start with that. Let's convert this to liters uh, just by moving the decimal three places to the left. So that's 0 0.03052 liters of H2SO4. And we just split this up. That's why we like to think about that. Maybe even jot it down right from the beginning. Gives us a very clear indication of what might be our next step. So 0 0.22 zero moles of H2SO4 on top with the one liter of H2SO4 solution on the bottom so that the liter cancels out. We then use our balanced equation again to kind of reference our, our location, where we started, where we're going on a mole map. We started here with milliliters of H2SO4 and we just moved the decimal to get to liters of H2SO4. We've just used the molarity to get the moles of H2SO4. That's where we are right now. We're going to go from moles of H2SO4 to moles of NaOH using the balanced equation, the molar ratio. And this time, we're going to be able to use the molarity of the NaOH to get to the liters and then the milliliters. So this is a, it's a very symmetrical approach on our map right here. We're starting with milliliters to liters, following through all the way back to milliliters on this side. All right, so... Uh, so we don't have to stop on this one. We're going to be able to just string all these conversion factors out. We're using the balanced equation right now for every one mole of H2SO4. Two moles of NaOH can be neutralized. Moles of H2SO4 cancel out. Now we're able to use the molarity of NaOH, but notice we need the moles to cancel out. So we're going to put that 0.248 moles of NaOH in the bottom and the one liter of NaOH solution on top. Now the moles of liter are gone. And the answer is in milliliters, so let's just go ahead and throw on that 1,000 milliliters per liter conversion factor to make sure we're doing it properly. And then we can run some numbers. So we have, slide that up here so we can see what's going on. We have 0 0.03052 times 0.22 times 2 divided by 48 times 1,000. So that is uh, 54. We've got four sig figs, three sig figs, exact three sig figs. So that's 54.1 milliliters of NaOH is needed 
for that titration. Plug that into WebSign. Where'd my green marker go? There we go. Get your green check mark. There you go. It's on the other side, isn't it? There you go. Two green check marks. All right. So that is number four. And number six is done very similar to that. So uh, hope that helps. And uh, yeah, I think I think that'll do it. You know, for now. So see you in class.